them. You joined the clan? The Ku Klux Klan. Years ago. And there was about 32 members. So I joined them by talking. First, that leader said to me, what do you think of the Ku Klux Klan? And it's a great idea, but it doesn't go far enough. Then they listen. But if you down it, they don't listen. You understand? Yeah. You, understand? you have to learn different people's values and speak in their terms, not your terms. If you speak ahead of the terms of people, they don't know what you're talking about. But if you use language, scientific centrifugal force, geomagnetic fields, they don't know what the heck they're talking about. Did you turn around the clan, though? Oh, yes. You want me to tell you how? Yeah. Okay. That was a longer process. What I did is I spoke to the leader only, took him to my lab, showed him a lot of interesting things, and he said in his southern accent, will you come on down to the Klan meeting and, and talk to our boys? I said, they wouldn't listen to me, Lou. He said, I'll get them to listen to you, because what you say makes sense. I showed him a lot of things he never knew existed. So he silenced them, and I spoke to them a little bit. Then I said, Lou, you can look at a person, tell us all about him. How do you do that? He said, well, I didn't think I can teach you anything. I said, well, if you can do that, tell me how it's done. So I brought some pictures down to the Klan meeting and projected them on the wall. And Lou said, he looks like a good man, a God-fearing man, an uh, American veteran, projecting his own values. On the end of the picture, I pulled out the bottom and said, wanted by the FBI for subversive action against the United States. When he used to speak, he just said anything, and the others, not knowing anything, shook their head. This is the first time what he said didn't make sense, so his group started to laugh at him. So I said to the guys, shut your mouth, because Lou knows more about people than we do. I had to defend him till the next film. The next film was a record of a man talking in an Oxford accent about aviation. He says, I see a skinny Englishman with a bald head and eyeglasses. He's projecting his own values. Now then, ten minutes later, the image comes on. It's a black guy raised in England. It's a goddamn nigger talking like an Englishman. This is Lou's reaction, not my words. And I said, Lou, that guy was raised in a dis different environment. If you took a black man and raised him in France, he'd speak like a Frenchman, if he was a baby. If you raise him in Germany, he'd speak with a German accent. He says, you mean to say that a black man speaks that way because he's raised? Yes. I said, Lou, if I took your kid and raised it in a Jewish family, he'd be a nice Jewish boy. In a Nazi family, a nice Nazi. People are not taught how to think. They reflect their culture. Proof that in Italy you're taught with your hands. Manada de Americano. See, you say, come on, they eat, there's good food. That's not you, that's the environment impinging upon you. We don't teach children how to think. So it's nurture versus nature, the great yeah. debate. Nature. Uh, environment shapes values, facial expressions. If you were brought up in the deep south, you'll speak with a southern accent. And if all you hear, it's a damn niggers are lazy, they don't do it. If that's all you hear, that's what you reflect. So you might say, I'm going to get me a nigger and I'm going to kick his ass. Is that you or a reflection of your culture? Think about it. Years ago, when I first was designing this system, I asked myself, that's what thinking is, talking to yourself. I asked myself, how are we going to change all these people? They have different values, different customs, different language, different interpretations. So that's the time I joined the Ku Klux Klan in Miami. The reason I joined is to see if I could change them. So I dissolved that organization in a month and a half. Alone. Then I joined the White Citizens Club. hate foreigners, all foreigners. So I joined that organization, I dissolved it in one month. Then I asked some questions in New York. What are the most backward people in the area? They said, the Arabs. I said, what makes you think they're backward? That group still believes the earth is flat, not all Arabs, the group they would talk about. So I said, boy, if I'm gonna to try to change the world, I've gotta change them. So I called up the lead Arab. He said, want to know whether I was an Arab? And I said, yes, I'm not an Arab. But that's to gain entry. 
So he said to me, you know, where was your father born? And I gave him places that he would accept. So he says, come and saw me, which means come and see me. So when I came to see him, he said to me, you believe the world's you round? I said, yes. He went, in his language, that means it can't be round. You're wrong. So he held up his hands like this, and he said, John, if the world he round, man fall me down here. All the water he fall me down from the world. There'd be no ocean, nothing. Get point to his head and how smart he was. So I figured I have to get to that guy if I wish to change the world. So I gave him a rubber balloon and I rubbed him with fur and I put cornflakes in his hand and told him to hold him away from the balloon. Those of you that don't know this, if you rub a balloon with fur or rub it fast, you generate static electricity and that will suck the cornflakes up to the balloon. So all the cornflakes jumped out of his hand up to the balloon and his joy with the paper. <laughs> he said, world he magnet? I said, yeah. Ah, and he explained that to all the other Arabs. In an hour and a half, they accepted the fact that the earth was round.